title of the first section today is graphing square root functions and state domain and range In this section, we'll graph square root functions and we'll state the domain and range of those functions. One definition that we'll use for this section is start when square root equals zero. For the section where we we'll graph using t-tables, we'll start the t-table when the square root is equal to zero, since the smallest value of a square root can be, will be zero. First functional graph is y equals square root of x. To graph this again, we can use a t-table. For a t-table again, you can use any sets of numbers that you want. The best sets though, Looking back at the definition is we'll start the table where the square root is equal to zero. If we have a single x inside the square root, that means the square root equals zero when x is equal to zero. And for the t table, we can do a couple numbers past that to get the graph for the function. If you plug a zero in, square root of zero will be zero. With a one, square root of one would be one and plug a two in, the square root of two would be square root of two. Graphing this on a xy axis, zero, zero would be at the origin, one, one, and two, square root of two. You can either use a calculator to get the decimal or you can estimate the square root of two would be a little bit above one. We'll end up with three points. These three points make a curve. And if we extend that curve out, the square root function will basically be a parabola shape, but with only half of the parabola. The negative parabola won't be on here, since if we had the negatives, this would not be a function as it's not one to one. But the square root function shape is a parabola going sideways, but only half of that parabola. Second part of the function, we want to find the domain and the range. If you remember from previous sections, the domain are the x values and the range are the y values. Looking at the graph, the x values, the smallest x value we can use is also the definition that we started with. So the smallest x value would be zero. Anything less than that would give us an imaginary number. So the domain would be x is greater than or equal to zero. For the range, we look at the y values. The smallest y value on the graph would be zero. We won't have any negative values on here since we can never take a square root of a number and get a negative. So the range will also be y is greater than or equal to zero. Second question and second function we'll graph. y equals the square root of x plus four. Again, graphing this, we can use a t-table. And again, to decide which number to start at, we can look at the square root or the function inside of the square root, which is x plus four. And we want to start the t-table where x plus four is equal to zero. And that value would be negative four, since negative four plus four would be zero. And again, you can do a couple numbers past negative four. We can do negative three, and negative two, so we get the correct shape for the graph. Plugging a negative four in, negative four plus four would be zero, and the square root of zero would be zero. Negative three plus four would be one, and the square root of one would be one. And negative two plus four would be two, 
taking the square root of 2, we can leave that as a square root of 2. Graphing these on a x-y axis again. The first point is at negative 4, 0. And negative 3, 1. And negative 2, square root of 2. And again, square root of 2 would be a little bit above 1. If you wanted to, you could do more points, but again, the shape will be a sideways parabola without the bottom part of the parabola of these graphs. For the domain and range again, we can look at the graph or the xy values. The smallest xy value on here would be negative 4. Anything to the left of negative 4 again would be imaginary numbers, so the x values have to be greater than or equal to negative 4. For the range, the y values, the smallest y value on the graph, again, is 0. And again, we cannot have any negative y values since we do not have imaginary numbers for this graph. So y has to be greater than or equal to 0. And last functional graph for this section is y equals negative square root of 2x plus 1. Again, graphing this, we can use a t-table to determine which number to start at. We can look at the square root, or the function inside the square root, which is 2x plus 1, and we want to find out where 2x plus 1 would be equal to 0. If you want to, you can take the equation and set it equal to 0 by subtracting 1 on both sides and dividing by 2 will have the value of x equals negative one-half. So if we start the t-table at negative one-half, then we can pick a couple values above negative one-half to get the graph for the function. Above negative one-half or bigger would be zero and one. Solving for the y values, if you plug in negative one-half into the function, two times negative one-half would be negative one, plus one would be zero. The square root of 0 would be 0, and negative 0 would still be 0. Plugging a 0 into the function, 2 times 0 would be 0, plus 1 would be 1, the square root of 1 would be 1, and the negative outside would make the y value a negative 1. And plugging a 1 into the function, 2 times 1 would be 2, plus 1 would be 3. We'll have the square root of 3 with a negative outside, which would be negative square root of 3. Using these values again, we can draw the xy axis to graph the square root function. The first point would be at negative 1 half 0. Second point would be at 0, negative 1. The square root of 3 again will be bigger than 1, but it will be less than 2 since the square root of 4 would be 2. And it will be negative, so in between negative 1 and negative 2. Looking at the points this time, the points line up to make a curve, but the curve this time will be going down instead of up. The reason for that is if we have a negative outside the square root function, the negative makes the square root function go down. And last part of the question, to find the domain and range. The domain, again, are the x values. The range would be the y values. Looking for the smallest x value in this function. The smallest x value is where we started the t-table, which is at negative 1 half. So all the x values have to be greater than or equal to negative 1 half. And the range, the y value, the smallest or critical y value is at 0 but this time the y values go down, including the negative numbers, but they do not include the positive numbers. So that means zero is the maximum point. There's no y value positive. So that means the y values have to be less than or equal to zero.
title of the last section today is graphing square root inequalities. In this section we'll continue to graph square root functions, but instead these will be square root inequalities. First inequality we'll graph is y is greater than or equal to the square root of x plus 5. To graph this, we could use a t-table like we did before and graph the points. Or if we want to, we can find a single point and then graph the inequality. For example, if we draw the xy-axis graph, the single point that we want to graph is where the square root is equal to 0. In this case, x equals negative 5, the square root be equal to 0. So we can graph a single point, the x values at negative 5, and if we plug a negative 5 in, negative 5 plus 5 would be 0. The square root would be 0. So the y value would also be 0. Using the single point, this point's where the square root function starts. And if looking back at the previous graphs, the square root will either curve up to the top or curve down to the bottom. In this case, since it's a positive in front, there's no negative signs, the square root will curve up to the top. It is also a solid line since it's or equal to. And the last part, since it's an inequality, we have to shade either above or below the graph. In this case, it's greater than or equal to, so we'll shade above the graph. When shading square roots, though, we cannot go past negative 5. So to the left of negative 5, neither the top or the bottom will be shaded. But starting at negative 5, going above the graph will be shaded for this function. Second question, and last question for the section. We have y is less than the square root of 6x minus 2, and outside the square root plus 1. And again, if you wanted to, you could do a t-table of several values to graph, or if you find the one point where the square root starts, then we can graph the function from there. To find that point, we want to find out where the square root is equal to 0 or where 6x minus 2 equals 0. Solving it for 0, we can add 2 on both sides. So 6x is equal to 2. And dividing by 6, if we reduce fractions, the x value we'll use is positive 1 third. So graphing the function on the xy-axis graph, the x value will be at positive one third. So in between zero and one, the y value to check if it's at zero or a different point, we can plug it back into the equation. Plugging a one third back in, six times one third would be two. Two minus two would be zero for the square root. The square root of zero would be zero. Adding one to it though, will make the y value at one. So our x value is at one third and the y value is at one. Graphing again, the square root will either curve up to the top or down to the bottom. If there's a negative outside, it goes down. Since there's no negative, it curves up to the top. It is an inequality though, which is less than. Since it's not or equal to, it'll be a dashed line for the inequality graph. And shading either above or below. Less than will shade below the graph. Keep in mind though, we're not going to shade anything to the left of one third. So imagine a, imagining a line going down one-third will shade everything below that and to the right. And that would be the graph for the function.